All right. <clears throat> CPI came out at 8.30. And as you can see, we've broken out of this, um, this, hold on, back this up, 10.30. We've been sort of in this tight channel between, well, let's, let's go to essence. between 4,100 and about 4,150. We've been in this tight channel here and we've finally broken out of it after CPI. Obviously it was good news. Um, I need to readjust this. Uh, you know what, I don't even know if I can do this in time. You know what, I'm gonna do it now. I'm gonna be back. All right, let me start off by reading Anna Mancini's tweet. Excellent follow through on CPI and target hit already in ES. This is bad news for me. This means any move as a result of CPI that I could have taken advantage of is too late now because I trade options, not futures. Um, I wrote as long as 4135 holds, 4165, 4173 is in play. We sold to 4135 to the precise tick. Let me zoom in here. He's not incorrect. 4135, remember I said yesterday, bulls want to try and keep it above 4135. This is also a daily level. And you can see here, it quite literally sold right to the level. I, I know this makes me think how sometimes people tell me that this is all just gambling. But if you have the funds and you, you are clever enough and you're smart enough, you can find where these where the lines occur or and also if you follow Adam Mancini, and you can take advantage of this. So if you were a futures trader and you weren't already in a position, you can put a buy limit here, maybe a small position or two, and it came right down to the tick. You would have been filled. And this was before the CPI came out. And it's basically been chopping all night long. Well, no, look, this is yesterday. This slight move was yesterday. All of this is just yesterday. This massive move here, this almost 30 point, no, 40 point move. Although I will say chances are the liquidity is probably pretty low at this time and you may not have gotten sold, but I don't know how true that is, especially if you already have a sell limit placed. And yeah, and I think the way it works is if you are one of those people that after you've been, after you got your position filled, you already had a sell limit targeting as quickly as possible. You would be filled before anybody else. I assume, I assume that's how it goes, but I'm not quite sure. Um, but you know, if you targeted Adam and Sini's first level at, um, four, one, six, five, then chances are pretty good. You would have been filled. So anyways, let me finish what he's tweeting. Four, one, nine, three and four, two, zero, five are up next. Let me see if I can zoom this back. I gotta figure out how to navigate this thing better because it's just the need to fill every price action to the whole entire, whatever. Okay, so I think this trend line, 4193, Um, I might have to readjust, figure out where that is. I might have to adjust this 41. No, I'm not going to adjust that. I'm going to keep this here. I have this at 4198. Um, yeah, I might adjust that 4198 a little bit. Hold on. Move this down just a bit. Yeah, that makes sense. 4193. And then 4205 is likely this trend here. And I already have a, a resistance there perfectly at 4205. Now, if he says, if we reverse, let me zoom it back in. If we reverse 4148 must hold <clears throat> now, because I'm trying to figure out these levels myself, I have to ask why is 4148 important? And as you can see, I'm going to have to zoom out again. I'm sorry. Uh, what Adam Mancini did was clever. He took the January 2022 down trend line, 
duplicated it and created a, I know it's hard to see here, but this is a bull flag, a bull flag right here. All, although in all honesty, I, I have trouble seeing it myself because the bottom of the bull flag has not been tested. So it's a bit confusing for me. Nonetheless, the top of the bull flag is 4148. If not that, then we'll look also at this trend line, which is the one I forced in from yesterday. Also, this is a reminder for me to turn on my Thinkorswim on the iPad, since it clearly always looks different. So 4148 must hold. So this level right here, <clears throat> the top of the bull flag, and we already have an important level here. Now, hopefully, although knowing my luck, it probably isn't the case. Hopefully, we have a similar setup on SPY. Okay. I'm just going to increase the size of my ES on my other screen. Make sure. Oh, you know what I should also do? I should have done this when I was gone. We're getting rid of this. Remove. We're getting rid of this. Although the January 22 trend line on my... You know what? I'm not even going to do that. I'm just going to try and see if I can copy the... I'm going to see if I can copy the, um, the top of the bull flag. No, no, that's not what I want. And I believe it goes down to here. Yes. I am curious if it shows because again, my January 22 trend line is way off for SPY duplicate. I'll work with that for now. All right, zooming back in 4148. Oh, got to zoom the other one back in too, sorry. Yeah, it looks like I have it correctly. So this is 4148. Top of the bull flag. Four. I think this is incorrect. Look at I have 4170 here, which is wrong. That's actually 4166. So let's fix this. And this is actually 4171. And this is a weekly on my ES. 4171. That's a rough approximation, unfortunately. And we reached a peak of 4177. So I'm just going to add that here just to help with context. So we'll zoom in a little bit closer now. Yeah. And we'll put an alert at 4148, which was here. Alert, alert. Now, there's still FOMC at 2 p.m. In fact, for this reason, I may have to set a reminder for myself. I think I'm not going to use an ODTE. I might try and use Friday's expiration and target, um, depending on what price action does, target uh, further out of the strike above. I should 
have a bearish plan, but generally this is the time of the year where it should be bullish. And obviously let's let's look at CPI and see what we have. Usually when I highlight something, it'll it'll come up. Also, this was released at 8.30, wasn't it? I'm confused why nothing says 8.30 here. 8.30 is when the action started. So unless this is the time scale is off, I'm, I'm confused. Well, whatever. The point is, the news was clearly good. So, and it looks like Bull is trying to keep this above. Let's see what level this is. Four one four. Hold on. Where did it bounce? Four one five six. It looks like where it bounced. This is actually more like 4155. Let me add this. If I don't already have the level labeled based on SPY, chances are this was a supply that formed before. And this is not 4156. <coughs> Oh, you know what? Maybe. No. No, it's not. On my ES, this bounced exactly at 4156. So this can't be 4156. I'm just going to remove this for now. <clears throat> All right, let's take a look at VIX. Interesting. We got to this one hour and then rejected, went to this daily and then rejected. Let's zoom out and see where potentially we can go. Nope. I'm guessing here. <clears throat> Let's go out even further. Oh my god, dude. I'm sorry, I'm trying to figure out a way that I can... I wonder if I take this off. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how I can zoom in and have this... But obviously this is thinkorswim, so I can't... I give up. <clears throat> I'm not sure where this will go down to. Um, I'm trying to zoom out so I can see. Because, you know, the beauty of trading view is I can easily zoom in, zoom out, change time frame, adjust the chart however I need to. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Whereas Swim in trash, I can't. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna guess, uh, I'm gonna have to, let me see if I can zoom out. I'm gonna guess that we may fall to this daily here and we may see a low of this area, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know how low this can really go, but I'm gonna guess this next daily level is probably where we're gonna reach and then we'll cool off a bit. What I would like to see is a pullback either to this daily and then we can continue rallying. Let it chop a little bit, pull back to this daily and then continue rallying. 
Um, again, I may have to use tomorrow's expiration or maybe Friday's expiration because I think this is going to be a choppy day up until FOMC. So anyways, this has been a long enough video for now. Um, I don't know what else to add. Uh, again, the bull plan is as follows. <clears throat> if we pull back to the top of the bull flag, complement to 4148, a demand is formed, we test it, we take it long. If 4148 fails, I think Adam and Cini mentioned that we may end up falling back down to... How large of a trade account do you think you would need to trade full-time, pay all of your bills? Support yourself 100% for trading. Comment below. This is interesting. But let me finish reading Adam and Cini's, uh No, nope, that was from yesterday. I want to read this thing from Trader Mike. Do I follow this guy? The thing I hate about Twitter is, and I guess Instagram does this too, but Instagram will tell you if you're following the person or not. You can easily see that. But this guy asked a question, how large of a trading account do you think you would need to trade full time, pay for all your bills, support yourself 100% from trading? Comment below. One guy said, realistically, 50 to 100,000 is needed. And he goes, any of the app traders I know that are actually profitable have a starting balance of 50,000 minimum. Most are above 100,000, upwards of 20,000. Takes money to make money. And then this guy agreed, he, he commented, <clears throat> <clears throat> agreed, 100K is the magic number in my opinion. You're not driving around in Lambos living in mansions, but if you live a humble life with your necessities covered, that'll do it just about anywhere. One guy says, if you have 500 to to $1,000 account, I think I'm cool, proper risk management. <clears throat> and this guy responds, can you live on about 60 bucks a month? Wow. So I guess this guy is saying that if you want to live off of trading only, your account size needs to be a minimum of 100,000. Well, I'm only $99,950 away. All right, back to Adam Mancini's tweet. <clears throat> yeah, he doesn't say where it'll fall if 4148 breaks, but I think we can figure this out ourselves. <clears throat> if 4148 breaks, then it's going to be back to 4135 again, which would seem like the actual logical place. Uh, bulls still want to keep that above there. But if that fails, then I would suspect it would probably sell to at least 4100, maybe 4118 again, probably the weekly. So that's the bull plan for now. We'll, we'll avoid any knife catches and see if we can find a demand that's formed and then retest it. Uh, 4148 might be a safe direct play. Maybe we can not wait for a retest if we can just take that long. 4135 perhaps, but it's, it's been well tested between yesterday and this morning. So there's a higher risk of it failing. This is probably where you want to see a demand form and see a retest. 4118, I, I don't know if I can say that's been tested a lot. We would just basically just run through it. And then, of course, there's 4098. But if we sell down here, chances are we're going to start selling hard, I think. And we'll also break below our this uh, channel that we've been following for the past couple months, this bullish channel that we've been in. So I think bulls want to, at the minimum, hold 4135, ideally 4148. And that's the plan. So we'll we'll take it direct at 4148. We'll take a retest at 4135. And if it falls below there, then maybe we look to short. And that's the plan. All right. So fingers crossed. Quick update. Market opened. Slow reaction. We sold down to 4155 to the tick. And we're bouncing here.
Yeah, you know what? Let me adjust that on ES. No, you know what? It bounced at VWAP and ES, so I'm not going to adjust that level. Interestingly, it did come down almost to where I could have gotten in, but I'm I'm thinking it would be smart to try and wait till after two o'clock to trade. It's going to be a highly volatile day. Uh, well, actually, it was volatile at eight o'clock, and it'll be volatile later on at two o'clock to see what happens. Mm, VIX. Nothing much for a report here. I mean, the market just opened, so I don't even know why I'm wasting time making this video. I'm sorry. But um, I'll be back if anything changes. Okay, about 15 minutes into the market open and rejected off 4177. I had my alert set just above 4148, a possible direct play. There was no indication of a bounce. We just sold right through that. We're now at 4142. Uh, the next possible bounce might be 4140, which is confluent to, wait, I thought that was 4135. Where's 4135 again? It's 4142. Here, sorry. Actually, I think chances are we may bounce at 4135. However, I will say this, if you're a futures trader and you managed to get in here at this little top, top, I don't know if you would have been filled because of the lack of volume, or if you took it short after seeing the rejection at 4177 at about 4168, this would be a uh, 20 point profit, 20 point drop. Oh, look like we're seeing recovery here, let's see. Well, like I said, I need to wait for a demand to be formed. So if, if I see something, I'll, I'll come back. Now, the MK strategy would just be don't even look at the market. In fact, I read an email from MK yesterday that I found interesting. He was saying that um, making plans, well, like long-term future plans, just put stress on you. And I remember reading something similar in a psychological book that I, I, I bought to overcome fear in trading and Generally speaking, the fear, obviously, obviously, this is painfully obvious, but the fear that one has for entering a trade is the potential loss of money. But when you dig deeper, the fear of that loss of money is a result of some greater psychological cause. And in cases like someone like myself, who desperately would like to get better at this so that I can use this as supplemental income initially and then eventually maybe primary income, and then, you know, um, resolve a bunch of other life issues. But to get from A to Z, you have to go overcome so many obstacles. And of course, one of those is not only figuring out how to trade properly, but overcoming the fear of entering a trade. So uh, when you think, oh, I need to get better at this so I can quit that horrible job or I need to get better at this so I can get health insurance or whatever it is your goals are. Ironically, thinking about those goals while you're trading in elicits fear, basically. So um, I think that's what MK, tried, MK was saying. And of course, he's also touted that his, his strategy is simple. You wait till 1030, you look for a demand, you look for a supply, you set your alerts. If it gets retested, you trade. You set your target at previous um, demands and supplies that were formed, if it's major or minor supply demand, and you sell there. That's it. It's simple. You don't do trend lines. You don't care about CPI, PPI, FOMC. You just follow that plan. And by doing that plan, you're almost guaranteed, based on my experience, and I've been trading his, trying to trade his plan for the past, let's say, four months, five months. Um, his plan, you can get at least one or two good trades per week. And I already showed this in the previous videos. Demand was formed. The retest failed. New demand formed. Wasn't retested. Uh, didn't come back enough. So what are you going to do? 
This was a day that couldn't, it didn't work. All right, move on to the next day. Demand was form. Retested once, retested twice, retested three times, rally. This was a day where it would have worked. That was Thursday. Friday, even better example. Demand was formed. Wasn't quite retested here. Definitely retested here. Take this long, big win. Yesterday, demand was formed, retested um, right before the market closed. And if you took this long and waited till right before the, the last minute, you could have made from 409 to 410 a little bit of money. But if we take the supply side of it, this is supply. It kind of is a false breakout retested. But this is tricky. This isn't as clear cut. And that takes us to today. So let's see what happens. All right. No demand has been formed. I'm going to fight this yawn. Um, big recovery here. Now, if I was Adam Mancini and I wasn't in a position seeing this big recovery and I'm tempted to do it, but I'm not going to, and I'm probably going to hate myself for not doing it. Seeing this big recovery, this long wick and seeing that we've just recovered 4148, I would go long. If I was Adam Mancini, I'll go long multiple positions and then I would target 4168 as my next sell spot. Let's see, let's pretend to be Adam Mancini for a moment. We're above 4148. Yeah, let's say we just, let's say we did it. We went long 10 options at $50, 500 bucks in. Let's see what happens. Also, oh, look at this. We have a confluence here, guys. On VIX, this this channel that goes down the middle, and let me show it again. This channel here, going down the middle of this channel that's formed, just rejected from that. So VIX is going down. We'll just still pushing. It's like they're having trouble getting past this SMA. But as of now, we're still even-ish. Uh-oh. Now, if I know Adam Mancini, if he did enter that position, he would have a stop loss probably around here. Three minutes until this candle closes. If we did do 500, we'll be 50 bucks in the hole right now. 60. <laughs> 70. I still have a feeling that bulls are going to want this candle to close above 4148. Also, I was watching some YouTube yesterday and I kept coming across channel after channel after channel saying how we are in a recession. We're about to be in a recession. The market's going to collapse. The world's going to explode. All of these things. And in my experience, every time I see these things on YouTube, spreading around all these different channels all these different videos that's the next day the market ends up rallying or the next couple days or whatever in other words the, the the market does not crash 
as to their expectations. Or they'll say some famous economic, economic, <laughs> economist, um, like the one who predicted the 2008 crash, is saying, oh yeah, the, the market's going to crash, market's going to crash. And then the very next day, market rallies, or the next few days. So... Now, bears want this to close under 4148. Let's see what happens. One minute left. Although I probably should tell myself not to take any trades until after 2 p.m., after the FOMC minutes. But sometimes a good position to get into is before the FOMC minutes. So like if, if I do believe this market's gonna rally, I want to pick, find the bottom, and the bottom might likely happen before FOMC minutes, but that might not be the case, so I don't know. It's impossible to predict. Looks like bulls are failing. They're not able to keep up. There it is. Next candle started, and watch is probably going to go down. Since the bulls weren't able to reclaim 4148, And if I were in a position with 500 bucks, I would have sold right now. That'll be 100 bucks loss right there, unfortunately. And we're turning around on VIX, of course. One could pretty, pretty much consider this. I actually moved this line. This line was at 4166. I rose it up here and this is 4168. So a supply was formed here and I have a feeling this is gonna be the next serious resistance if the bulls are able to turn this around. But for now, and as before, the next possible bounce point is gonna be 4135. But if this fails, I, I think this is gonna drop. 4100 is gonna be the next target. So I'll be back and uh, I'll report. Okay, I, I was not paying attention. Look at this. Bulls turned it around. They dropped back down to, what, what level is this, by the way? Let me turn, edit. I don't know why I didn't turn it green. 4142. They turned it around, picked it back up, reclaimed 4148, and in doing so, they formed a demand, a clean demand. So let's go ahead and list this. Now, the question is, will it be retested? That's the question. So demand has been formed. In 26 minutes, the time the trade will begin for the MKA strategy. This demand was formed at 410.74. So 4.94 is our, is our 20 cent zone. So we're going to put an alert at 97 and hopefully, hopefully the bulls can keep this chopping above and then we come back down and retest it and this pops back up, hopefully. But check this out, if we were, <laughs> this is, this is how this this is why trading is so frustrating. Remember, hypothetically, we took 10, 10 options at fifty for a five hundred dollar trade, hypothetically, and we said that uh, I said that I would exit at four hundred. Oh wow, we already turned back around. Well, no, this candle has to close. If this if this candle doesn't close, I probably shouldn't. I probably should make a note not to put the demand until the candle closes because it just began five minutes ago. If bulls fail and this drops below, then forget it, the demand's gone. But still, if we had not exited our hypothetical 500, we, had, we would be down 120 bucks, but it came right back up where we could have broken even at the very least. We'll lose 10 bucks in commission, but let's see what happens. And, and again, this is tomorrow's expiration. This is not today's. 
so the the profits aren't going to be as severe severe is not the right word as as good as if we were using the ODTE I'm going to have to put the alert again later after this candle closes because it just it just set itself Sorry, distracted by a medical post on Instagram. I'm, I'm just, you know what? Let me finish this video. Um, I'll come back when this candle closes and see what happens. And then I'll put another alert. All right, 15-minute candle closed. This is officially a demand zone. The major demand for the day has been formed at 10.15, and it keeps pushing higher. Now... As per my strategy, I have to wait for this to come back and retest, which it may not do. If we hypothetically were in at the $500 and we stayed in, who knows how much higher this would go. If this does make its way back to the 4168, this $500 would be worth about maybe, I would guess, but to look up here, yep, it'll be worth about maybe $70, $80 if we can get back up here again. So that would be a $300 profit. So we'll have to risk down a hundred and tw wait a hundred yeah a hundred and twenty dollars to risk we have to risk being down 120 i draw down of 120 for the hope of some profits sadly though even if we were still in that position look at it we're, we're 30 bucks up but imagine spending 500 bucks to make 30 bucks when you were just down 120. That's why you have to have like a nerve nerves of steel and just be willing to s trust your plan. Now, what I would like to see, I don't want this to go up to 4168. I want this to chop around for a while and then come back and retest. That's the strategy. Preferably maybe around two o'clock and then it rallies. That would be great. And also we might have a little bit of theta decay while it chops. So we can avoid dealing with that theta decay. But right now VIX is heading back down, which again, might be a problem. See how we formed a supply in VIX? Rejected red. This is why I like confluences. We have, let's look at all the comp <coughs> confluence we have. We, let's count them. First, we're at previous level, 4142, bouncing just above the daily, 410 or 4140 for spot uh, ES. That's confluence one. Confluence two, rejecting at this SMA and this center channel and from the daily. Confluence three, we formed a supply on the VIX. Confluence four, I didn't mention this before, but remember that trend line that doesn't show properly on desktop, but it shows properly on the iPad. We formed a demand just exactly at that level. I'm looking right at my iPad. I remember this line is something I made up to try and look like the one on my iPad because the channel that I'm actually talking about is this one up here. 
this line. I know it's hilarious. On my iPad, this line is where this line is. So I had to draw a whole separate line because this line doesn't show properly in the desktop. But this is where it shows on the iPad. I don't know if my iPad is in logarithmic or not. I don't know how to adjust that on the iPad. But one thing I've learned a long time ago with Thinkorswim is that very often the price action trend line doesn't look the same way as it does on the desktop. So that's Confluence 4, right? Uh, or is that 5? I I've lost count at this point. So many reasons to take this long. But our strategy calls for us to wait for this to come back and retest which I don't want it to happen too soon. I want this to happen at minimum 30 minutes from now. But as you can see, we're already selling off at, it looks like we're rejecting at VWAP on SPY. And we reclaim VWAP on ES, but it's, it's failing. Well, Let's see. And there it goes. The alert just got hit. Um, this is not good. This, my gut is telling me that we've retested way too soon. This needed to chop a little bit before it comes back down, and it didn't. And if we hypothetically were doing that $500 trade, if we didn't sell here at 540 to make 40 massive dollars, so a, a less than 10% profit, we would be back down again. So this has just made a new low, this particular option. Remember, this is not ODTE, this is tomorrow. It was at 30, 38 here. Now it's at 36 way up here. Theta decay, man. And of course, this is the 415 strike. So this is assuming we can get back up to this, this line up here. I'm curious what Friday would look like. Wow, so if we chose a 415 on Friday, it'll be $70. So more than double today's option at the same strike. <laughs> oh, could I be wrong? It's retesting. VIX is nowhere near as low as it was before. Is this the retest and the, I don't know. No, oh, I'm still gonna wait. I might hate myself for doing it, but I'm still gonna wait. I want another retest later on, maybe even a retest of this level, I don't know. By then, if it comes back down and test later on, I can maybe choose a, a closer strike, maybe 414 or 413, and it'll be worth probably less than this right now. So, but this is a pretty good recovery though, so far. But the inability to get above VWAP is not good. And VIX appears to be rejecting at the one hour that I have here, which was the pre-market rejection. That is interesting. Isn't it interesting? This is where we rejected pre-market, all right? This is where we rejected pre-market, and this is where we are right now on the open market. Try to remember that. Rejection pre-market, where we are right now. But yeah, this is it. This is it. This is where I should, I sh when my alarm hit in, kicked in, I should have gotten in. If I gotten in here, is it 20 cents? Let me see. Yeah, I think so. This is 7.4 and this bounce occurred around 9.0. So it's within the 10 cent marker. So yeah. The only thing that isn't quite my strategy is that it's not after 10.30, but I, I don't know how how significant that rule is. 
So yeah, I probably should have jumped in here at 40 or something. Oh well, all I can do is wait for it to be tested again. And actually, I want this to be below 35. Actually, below 30. If it gets there, we'll, we'll probably think of getting in. But look, if I had gotten in, if I had set a buy-in right around here, I'd already be a whopping $10 in profit. But again, with my small account, that's a lot. Oh, wow, they just managed to recover VWAP and then it sold off. What a choppy mess. All right. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. I want to know if this is going to come back down again and retest. Yeah, I, I'm, I don't know. I don't want this video to be too long, so I'll come back if any significant changes. All right, demand has failed. We've dropped down back to 4142, the initial bounce. I don't think we're going to hold there. And then we just got a tweet from Adam Mancini. <clears throat> All right. Adam Mancini says, typical CPI volume in ES. I was looking for a runoff 4135 support to 4175 target where we, I tweeted lock in gains. This was this morning at CPI, though this is 830. So this is for this is for futures. I mean, that's what Adam Mancini trades. So I'm the only fool that unfortunately tries to use options using his levels. Chop time now and bulls must keep holding 4148, 4135 to keep go, run going. 4135 fails, we see 4105, 4095. So this is basically what I was saying earlier. We're not at 4135 yet. That's down here. We're at 4142 exactly right now. So, <clears throat> and that dropping below that, which I didn't think this was going to hold. Yep, there it is. It's slipping. Bunch of stop losses are being kicked in. And this is where 4135 bounced at 2.30 this morning. Actually, no, no, I'm off here. 4135 is actually right here. That shows you how far off I am. Four one three seven. Whatever I have here is, where was this dip at 230? Yeah, this is actually 4128. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna adjust it. Man, I really can't, I, I, I'm pretty sure Thinkorswim or one of these other thing, one of these other programs can create an algorithm that when you put a level on ES, an equivalent level will immediately spark up on, um, here's 4135 right here. Major. Oh, there's the bounce. Bounce occurred around 4136.74. Let me take off this. Actually, let me edit it. This now is possibly a resistance, but I don't think it will be.
not the reaction you would hope to see from bulls. Well, anyways, if it breaks and falls, I'll come back. If a demand is formed, I'll have to wait anyways. <clears throat> this is a pretty big sell candle, but we are creating a demand just above the 4135 level. However, this candle still has to close. If we look on VIX, and yeah, you can see it's the bears are pushing this down. If we look on the VIX, VIX isn't good. We've gone up beyond this line and we're about to make, well, we came close to making a new high today for the VIX. So mm -hmm. let's see what happens with this one. We still have three more minutes before this candle closes, but this is not a very good, yep. This is now any chance where demand is gone now, unless bulls can turn this around. It looks like we may see 4,100 today. And this is a supply, definitely. Not one that one can say was retested, but this is a supply. I guess, I know some people use a view up as a strategy and they'll probably, I don't know, maybe take it long here, thinking that this might've might go up, but if they had enough funds to quickly exit and take it short, this will be a good play. And of course, the exit would be 4135. But if this fails, we're going to see 4100. <clears throat> that never that never came to fruition. <clears throat> this candle dropped and failed. We just had another candle, but I have a feeling this is going to drop and fail too. We're going to see 40. 95 or 4100 soon well i don't know how soon but out of curiosity let's take a look at what happened if we would have taken a put uh what is this let's say 410 oh wait, that's tomorrow <laughs> we got to use odte 410 oh even that's expensive Oof. on days where expected volatility the premium gets more expensive for the options there are no news coming out whatsoever this week, no um, earnings reports, no anything. Typically, the options cost less. Um, all right, so let's just pick, let's pick the 409, see if that's possible. Even if my account, that's not possible. But look, if you went short shortly after the bell and you got in, I don't know, 800 Right there, you already made, you know, a good um, 800 bucks. Well, I don't know if you'll call the top. Or would it, where was this? This was 947. This is when we hit that daily. Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> well, what if you took this rejection here at BWAP? This was at 1030. Here. And you got in an 80 here. You could have almost made a thousand, almost. But if you still, if you want to be stubborn and still hold on, it's possible. We they've lost 4135, 4128 has gone. Why do I have two 4128s? Man, I'm hold on. Yeah, actually, this I'm getting rid of this. This is 4128 down here. A little bit further back. Yeah, I'm gonna raise it up, raise it up a little bit. Interesting to note that not only has all the rally from pre-market been taken away, but if we drop a little bit more, in fact, yeah, if this drops lower than yesterday's low, this is gonna drop. This is gonna drop and sell. 
I'm just curious that, that we're having this much of a sell before FOMC, but maybe all of this was just noise and we're still waiting for FOMC and the CPI, the CPI was keeping it from falling, I guess. I don't know. I don't want to speculate, but this is going to drop some more. And if you were in long at, if you got in at 70 something here, then you might as well sell, take your thousand dollar profit. If you went along at 80, 90, you may want to hold or sell some and hold out and see if this drops to 4,100. But if this does drop to 4,100, this is going to be massive. This is going to be massive. 4,100 is, no, I hate when I do that so much. 4,100 is, really, is it that far down? Well, yeah, this is 4098. So, yeah. So, out of curiosity, let's take a look at what the 405 put looks like now. Okay, now I'm, I'm starting to wonder if I go short here. Damn it, I wanted to go to Whole Foods and get this protein powder that was on sale again. But I forgot the new sale starts today, so that sale might be over. And I'm sorry, I'm way off tangent. I'm sorry. I still think 4128 may be a possible bounce since it was the bounce yesterday. So if that does fail, then we definitely are going to go see 4100. But I'm wondering... No. The moment I buy a put, this, this will be my entire account. And this is going to turn around and spook me out into a sale. So never mind. There it goes, 4128 failed. And though I'm, I'm starting to think I should have gotten in at 50. If I gotten in at 50, and if this thing goes down to 4100, this is going to turn into over $100 profit. Damn it. One thing that's frustrating about trading is it's like you have 10 people in your head telling you what to do. Person number one is saying, nope, nope, stick to your strategy, stick to your strategy. Wait for demand to be formed, wait for supply to be formed, wait for it to be tested. Second person is saying, look, this thing's been selling since <clears throat> pre-market. Go short, go short, jump in. Another person is saying, don't do anything until 2 o'clock. Wait until FOMC. And the other seven people are probably telling me to go get food. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, while I was away making myself some breakfast, guess what? Demand was formed. Um, I did mark it. I, was, I did see that it was formed earlier, but I was hoping to get a retest. But it appears that's, that's not going to happen. Um, the closest we got to a retest was... This was, this line is 6.5, I think. Let's see. Let's see if it comes up. No, it won't. Because, you know, think or swim. So we'll just, we'll just guess. There it is. So this is 0.65. And it pulled back to 0.25. So a good 40 cents away. It's about 20 cents out of my zone. Um, let's switch this around. Is this Thursday? Yeah, this is Thursdays. I'm wondering if I should just go back to today's. I might just do that. We'll look at a 411. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. If we can get a retest here, which I don't know if that's going to happen, but you know what? I can't look at today's. I got to look at tomorrow's. 
let's try 412. That's still way out. I would just be able to afford getting one option here. But yeah, looks like we bounced that 4122. We didn't make it to 4100 after all at the fail of 4135, interestingly. So I called it wrong, Adam Bencini called it wrong. But there's still a possibility that this might reject a 401. Oh, no. Bulls reclaim 4135. So, yeah, this is a win for them. If 4135 has been reclaimed, that means 4148 is next, 4155, and then back to 4168. Let's take a look at the VIX. Supply was formed just under this four hour. I'm gonna have to adjust. No, I'm not gonna adjust this. Um, oh my God, my, you know what? I've been hanging a lot in the hopes that it might relieve the shoulder pains, but shoulder pains are still there. It's not working. And it feels like the pain is throbbing into my elbows and my wrists. Fascinating. All right, so Bulls need to get past this daily on VIX, and then up, upwards they go. So yeah, this would have been a good trade here, getting in here. But I had no idea that it would bounce at 4122. I was pretty convinced it was going to be 4135, and Adam and Cini probably call this a false breakdown <clears throat> of yesterday low. <clears throat> so unfortunately, no retest here. If this had... If this retests, though, I'm going to put an alert. 6.5, 20 cents above would be 8.5. So we'll put an alert. Jesus Christ, what is this? What is this? When did I ask to order anything? 6.5, 8.5, create alert. I'm so glad that thing set up that that it requires a confirmation. We'll go up one more if it's below. So yeah, I don't I don't think this will come back down and retest, but it's possible. It is possible. But if you if you were able to guess that they were gonna it's gonna bounce at four one two two, and you bought you put in that buy in. I were able to get in here at 60 something. Yeah. You're up almost 50% profits right now. So the resistances that bulls need to get by and, and the shorts that bears would want to look for is again a rejection here, but that seems to be not be failing. A rejection at FIWAP or a rejection at 4148. And this trend here, which I think is the top of the bull flag. Uh -oh. Okay, quick update. I don't have my glasses on, so most of this is a blur. But this is basically what's happened before. Clean demand has been formed, and it rallies. There's no retest of the demand zone. I still have an alert set. It may be possible that with FOMC minutes, we might dip back down here and I get a second chance for a trade. I don't know. But so far, bulls have managed to reclaim. Ugh, I I can't see the levels, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm blind. Um, it looks like they've reclaimed 4140 and we're about to reclaim 4148, I believe. They've been having trouble reclaiming VWAP, but they managed so far. And on VIX... As you can see, VIX formed a supply just below this four hour level and it's been falling ever since. The grind has been slow though here and I guess this is um, confluent to what's happening with VWAP and SPY. But eventually this is gonna pop down and I think we may see this daily again at some point today, depending on what's gonna be said by the FOMC. Not much else to really update there. Um, had I gotten in here, I could have possibly made 40 bucks, but the big move I assume is going to be happening after two o'clock.
So we have a little over 90 minutes, a little under 90 minutes to go. All right, um, I took a glance at VIX and I noticed something. I already drew it out. We formed a megaphone over the past couple of days. Generally speaking, I don't know if I can count this. I can easily move the megaphone up here, but this is where the megaphone began. But as we know, generally speaking, the third time the megaphone is tested and fails, that's a pretty big drop, right? Um, but in this case, this would be a rally for um, ES. But here we had our drop, and I wish I noticed this megaphone before, but this is where the supply for the VIX formed in conjunction with this line, although this line moves, again, depending on um, what what time of day it is, basically. Um, but yes, so I'm curious. Maybe we'll see a top here, but I think likely we'll break through this and come down here. But if for some reason we sell off, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if we're going to sell off to this area here. That being the case, if on FOMC minutes, we dip back down. I'm curious if we'll retest 4122 again. I put a, a buy in at 4122, try and figure out where it would be. I picked 40, and look, I think it's right there. So we'll see what happens. One hour to go. You know, I just noticed something here. Sorry. I just put this on a 30 minute candle, right? And I zoomed in. That's my, I have my other chart. I have Spy on the larger screen on a 30, even though honestly, I don't even look at that screen. I probably should figure out how to use this real estate better. Maybe I should divide this into four screens. I might do that. I might do that. I got to figure that out. But anyways, um, <clears throat> I was when I was looking at this screen, I was wondering why my demand zone that formed on the 15 was was so low. <laughs> but when you put this to a 30 minute, okay, here, clean 30 minute demand formed. It's kind of off. And look, a perfect retest. So unfortunate. Um I don't know how I could have played this to be honest. I'm trying to think. This 30 minute demand formed at 1130. Where's 1130? So this has got to be the lowest point. Yeah. I couldn't have gotten in, but if I had, if I could, if if I had a large account, getting in here would be smart. If you got in here, say 750 and sold here at 105, you got 300 bucks. It's not 50% profits, but it's decent. Anyways, let's switch it back to a 15. I'm still going to keep my buy-in, possible buy-in of 4122, though. And I need to adjust this. I'm going to label this 15. I label the other one 30. All right, let's see what happens later. See, this is one of those days where if you did not use ODTE, watch, if I had chosen the 410 strike, for example, right, at today's expiration, it would have been cheaper than the 412 tomorrow to get into, first of all. Um, not significantly cheaper because the strike is only just a couple points out the money, but Whereas if I use the Friday one, you saw it was worth like, what, $57, $58, and it peaked at $130. But if you get in here, if you got in at $60, you can exit at 60 
160 up here and get a thousand dollars in 10 options using ODTE and look this was the supply that was created earlier and look where we're ejecting now look on the VIX remember this megaphone I found rejected from the top rejected from the bottom rejected from the top rejected from the bottom so where it goes from here I don't know um, I'm hoping we might get a test down here and a spike down below for a future rally tomorrow as I'm trying to use today's expiration I'm risking a um, I mean tomorrow's expiration I'm risking a um, swing but it looks like should I should have used today's expiration and taken this long I could have chosen a further out strike maybe the 411 um, and I could have gotten in again at some point here and made you know 50 bucks so yeah let's see if um you know what let me go ahead and try the swing anyways we'll go back to 412 and maybe this might drop to a point where we can afford to get in 13 minutes until 2 p.m. It's kind of ironic that I, the, the one big project of the day I've gotten is right now. It's texted to me or emailed to me five minutes before FOMC minutes. It's just, it can't, can't be a coincidence. So I'm ignoring it. Let's see what happens. My theory is that this isn't going to drop down much at all after this much of a rally. We've already gone up almost three points, almost four points on SPY. So 4122 was the key level. I wonder if in the future, if I see a 50 minute demand, I should look for a 30 minute demand and see if it gets retested. Generally, FOMC minutes is not as dramatic as the actual FOMC, so. And on VIX, we are now at the bottom of the megaphone. So it looks like we might be breaking through this after all. We have formed on both the 15 and the 30 minute a supply right here though, right below this previous supply. In fact, if I had the funds, I would have taken a short right here. But what I mean by if I had the funds is I want extra funds just in case the short doesn't play out and this continues to turn around and go up. But I'll probably take a short and sell early, maybe just above um, previous, so maybe at 4135 just for a scalp. But I don't predict this is going to drop down to give me an opportunity to trade. And I also forget how long FOMC minutes tend to be. I think it's 15 or 30 minutes. I don't remember.
No dramatic wild moves. Oh my god, dude. Yeah, I should remember that FOMC minutes doesn't really elicit of any, any violent moves compared to the actual FOMC. And technically speaking, we are just above the bull flag. So still bullish. In fact, I would think bulls don't want, wouldn't want this to go below 4148, and I think that's what they're trying to do. We're above 4148, we're above VWAP, and on VIX, we're almost about to break the bottom of that megaphone. All of which means I won't have an opportunity to get in. My opportunity came and went. Oh, and if I did take a short here, I would have already have been stopped out or I would have sold for a loss. Well, maybe not. But really, realistically, what I would have done is had my stop loss just above. I'm pointing at it like you guys can see. Sorry. I would have my stop loss above 4155, above the previous supply that was created. That's logically, that's the rational, logical place you would put your stop loss. If I was short. And I would definitely want to see bulls lose 4148 and lose VWAP. And I would want to see a rejection at that bottom of the megaphone on VIX. If I was short. Relying Google did not give you the answers. Uh, I'm I'm going to stop the video. If anything dramatic happens, I'll come back because this is anticlimactic all right i just chose a further out strike and um <clears throat> i might take this if we break the supply or if we retest vwap again and i'm going to put a tight stop loss
I would much rather try 413, but I can't get in that one. Although, as I recall, um, what is this? Um, PPI is tomorrow, which is odd. Usually PPI comes before CPI. Looks like we might not get down to BWAP at all. All right, here we go. I doubt I'll get filled. This is going to go to 49. This is going to go to 50. Oh, I take it back. <laughs> I was going to put it at 47, 46, because I know what's going to happen, as it always happens. In fact, it's a bit... No, we actually passed the megaphone. We broke past the megaphone on on VIX. VIX is going down. It's of course. Let me guess. Now it's going to go down and bounce on VWAP. Anyways, I take back what I said about the tight stop loss. I'm not going to put any stop loss. Let's just run. Well, I've said that before and I didn't listen. So, as far as the sell, I think I'm still going to try a swing. But then again, since PPI is coming out tomorrow, I don't know. All right, I'm pretty sure PPI is tomorrow. Thursday, initial jobless claims, and then PPI. I wonder if the time is off here. Yes. Yeah. I wouldn't think the FOMC minutes would last past 2.30, so let's see what happens. Anyways, I'll be back to let you know how much money I lost or if this thing actually goes my way. Well, again, I don't know how long these meetings last, but um, as you can see, bulls failed to break this previous supply and we're rejecting off of it. And I may <laughs> go back about, against what I said before about um, about not using a stop loss. Let's see if they can at least recover VWAP. I doubt they will. And on VIX, we're turning back around. Back above the megaphone. I guess I chose to go long at a pretty asinine spot because we had the dailies resistance on VIX. Um, looks like we didn't even manage. Oh no, we did. We got above the the bull flag, but lost it. And we had this supply just above here for spy. So Uh, we all know what happens. I've made plenty of videos to show. The moment I sell, 
to take what this is gonna be like a twenty dollar loss right now. Yep. It's gonna be one of the biggest losses in a while. The moment I sell, it'll turn around and start to rally. As always. But I'm gonna put my stop loss at twenty four, which is gonna be even yep, there it is. You know what? I'm I'm curious. Hold on. Hold on. Am I am I an idiot? Is it two o'clock? Yeah, it was two o'clock the FOMC minute start. Or did I read it wrong? Yeah, FOMC minutes at 2 p.m. I don't know. Something must have been said that caused this big drop. And yeah, this was a big loss. Big loss. Pretty much shut me down right there. But remember what I said. The very moment where I sell, it'll then turn around. Wait, I am so confused. It still says I'm in the position. Oh, I could have swore I put a stop loss and it filled. Well, I'll put the stop loss now. I know, we're probably thinking, what are the chances this might turn around and start to go back up and spare me? Zero. Zero. I can almost guarantee my life this is going to drop and fill my stop loss. I have like a 90% a assurity on that. And chances are, once it does, it may turn around. There it is. This equates to a huge, oh, look, Adam Asini just tweeted. Ironically, right when I took this loss, this was a $30 loss right here. That's half the account, gone. <laughs> Incredible, man. You can't make up this kind of bad luck. You really can't. And we're reversing on that megaphone. Look. It, it, the irony is, my, my dumbass is taking a, sh a long at a point where we rejected earlier this morning. And, well, the megaphone, I might have to move this down, I guess. I don't know. Um, yeah, I should have taken the short. When I clicked long, I should have taken the short. Let's see what Adam Insini says. Although I'm, I'm not in the mood to even continue making the video or anything right now. 55 point range today in ES to go nowhere. 4135 has been key. It held at 830 for the rally to 4175 target. It held again after it then failed to 4122 and recovered. Four tests this week. Here again. Same drill. Needs to see a push here within 15 minutes. Fail here, sees 4122, then 4105. Now, if you're doing futures and you went long here at 830, 
well, you know, you would have sold by now, I would think. But remember, whenever I put a stop loss, it'll turn around somewhere around that point. My stop loss was a 21, it got as low as 18. Oh, and ironically, here's the thing. This is where I feel even more foolish. This is the retest of the previous demand. It's almost there. Watch it turn around now. And you know what? I realized too, I threw my strategy out the window. I didn't even think of it. I threw my strategy out the window. If uh, following the MK strategy, this is not where I would have gone long. This is a retest of previous supply. This is where I would go short up to this point. Why? I don't understand. It is, um, it's amazing. I just completely threw the strategy out of my head and I'm just focusing on trading based on the 2 p.m. whatever whatever so if this ends up turning around and rallying how dumb do i look for not even following my own strategy granted it didn't quite make it all the way down but getting in here at 1719 and this is tomorrow expiration mind you i could have got in for two maybe three options at this point if i didn't trade that earlier option And look where it's rejecting on VIX. Right off the center channel and right from this daily. How much you want to bet in the next 90 minutes this thing's going to rally? Of course, now that I've said it, I've put it out to the universe, it's going to do the opposite probably. Oh, man, what a big loss today. Anyways, so yeah, guys, what I did was stupid. I went long when, based on the MK strategy, I should have gone short. Here's why. Supply stacked with supply stacked with supply. And... I think there was a moment where I was actually positive coming up to here and I should have just sold and taken my money back. Had I taken this short targeting the demand at 408, here's what it would have looked like. Where I went long, this candle started at 1415. I went long actually here in this candle, I believe. So that's 1400. Exactly, you know, you know what? Why even guess? Let's look. I took that trade at 1416. So right after this that where it is 1416. So here, 1416, I could have gotten in for 40 bucks here or even waited a little bit longer, gotten it at 36 bucks where this supply perfectly held 36 bucks and sold here I made a hundred today instead of losing 30 I could have made a hundred but my mindset was thinking about swinging it and you know what and let's let's point out that that was that's tomorrow's expiration let's look what happened if I if I had taken today's expiration at oh that's right ODTE puts are kind of funky I would have to use it close to the money or add the money so let's try 410 410 is right here so even better I could have gotten in at 14 16 at like $25 and would have been well into a hundred dollar profit by now I swear man trading is like I was gonna say trading is like playing 4d chess 
against an AI. But really, what I did was stupid. The supply was here. The supply was here. And it, see, these are these are days like this where MK strategy works great, and Adam Anthony's levels not so great. No disrespect to Adam Anthony whatsoever, but you know, basically the thought was if we can regain this level, then this next level should be up. But that's not necessarily the case. It doesn't always work that way, and you know, I'm sure Adam Anthony knows this is no no disrespect to him. But um, here, MK strategy was beautiful. Wait till after 10.30. 10.30 hits. We got our major supply. I mean, I swear, I need to just take the wires in my head with those two words and reverse them. Major demand, major supply. This is a 30-minute supply. Clean 30-minute supply. Look, clean 30-minute supply. Retest, rejection. But we also have a clean 50 minute supply. Retest, 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 rejection. Any time here could have gotten in for 20, 30, or waited a little bit longer and got in for a low, high, eight, low 20s, high teens, and then rejection. Where? Back to the previous demand. That's where you would sell. It could turn around here. It could. I don't know, but if I had stuck with MK strategy and traded the way I should have, I wouldn't care. I would have just made a hundred bucks. Better yet, better yet, if I used ODTE and I was using this this strike 410 and was patient and waited for another entry here. No, actually no, we're waiting for two o'clock. So if we would have entered here, if we would have put our buy-in just just below this supply line right here. We could have gotten in at 18, 19, 20 dollars for more than one option. So basically today, just today alone, for 40 bucks, 50 bucks, which is basically what I just spent on that one call that I lost 30 dollars on, I could have made 200 dollars. Yeah, I don't know. I absolutely don't know. I think this is one of the reasons why it's good to trade with a group of people that are seasoned and know the strategy and they can say to you, hey, what are you doing? What are you, what's your plan? I'm going to go long here. And they can say, hey, wait a minute, think about it. Why would you go long here when you have supply, supply, and supply? Plus, you also have on the VIX, um, the daily just right here that we rejected from earlier probably isn't a very good idea to go long. And if you do want to go long, Maybe you should at least wait until we break through the supply and shows, you know, good follow through. So, yeah. Whatever, man. I just, I guess if I get hit enough in the head, maybe I'll learn eventually, right? It's only been two years. All right, I'm going to step away. I thought this can be the last video for a while unless something major happens, but you can see... Even though we dipped slightly below the previous demand, a major demand from earlier, we're recovering from it. We're getting back above. So in other words, for a couple options around 40 bucks, I could have made 200 bucks plus today. And if I wanted to, if I was ballsy enough, if I had enough options left, money left, I could go for a long and see if this demand now recovers. And if I had gotten in, let's say 25, I don't know, I'll already be up. Of course, it would be somewhat asinine after making 200 bucks, why even bother spending it? But hey, this could possibly come back up later. So. Uh, as you can see, this attempt to bounce from the previous demand has now... I would say officially failed. We've made a new low of the day, falling below 4122, meaning, again, had I taken a put, an ODTE put at 410, 
Look at it. It's now almost $190 in value. From $18 to $190. Probably one of the best plays of the day right here. And it's beautifully an MK strategy. Major supply formed earlier this morning. Major supply retested. If you kept your stop loss above here or if you waited until after two o'clock, enter in here just above major supply and bam, beautiful, beautiful play. Yet another example of how the MK strategy works. Yeah, I know I said uh, I'm not gonna make any more videos for today, but I still wanna point this out. Look, I adjusted the megaphone so it lands perfectly here. Yes, it shot just above here, but if you look at this on the 1515, this is, if you're going long, this is probably a terrible spot to do so. This is perfectly, you know what's funny too is I said this, I said, we rejected from here, rejected, rejected, bounced, rejected, and I just, for some reason, convinced myself, I don't know why, and this is the thing where it's dangerous to have a bias, I convinced myself that this was going to break below here never occurred to me that I might be wrong and this might reject and come all the way back up here. Don't know why. Never occurred to me. And I think it's because I was so focused on the fact that the bulls had recovered all of these levels and we've rallied most of the day prior to the 2 p.m. Um, F1C minutes. And back down we go. Now we're at 4118. At this rate, by the time the market closes, we might end up dropping further to 4100, which was the ultimate target if 4135 fails. So, I mean, it's it's just ridiculous what I was doing. Supply was formed, minor supply, major supply, since this was open market, minor supply stacked just below major supply, and then minor su minor supply again absolutely dumb what I did to take this long <sighs> yeah okay um, I'm gonna walk away finally but I just remembered I'm not I did say I, I don't know I'm gonna rewind I gotta look look at the videos I recall saying earlier that if I had a larger account I would take a short here and then I was saying how if I had taken the short, I probably would have been negative at this point. But this was before the 2 p.m. If I had taken the short after 2 p.m., it just didn't occur to me to take the short. I don't know why. But then again, I didn't have enough money to go both long and short. I could only go one way or the other. But this is one of those days where if I chose to go one way and chose to go the other, one would have had a slight loss. I probably would have sold quicker, but the other one most definitely would have paid off. I mean, look, remember I said it was at 100? Look, it's now $240. We're so deep in the money, so deep in the money now that this is worth $240. So again, a couple options worth about 40, 50 bucks could have yielded almost $500 at this point. Just wow, man. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm going to stop saying it. I'm not going to make any more videos because every time I say it, I come right back. Like, But look, something else I've noticed. Just give me a moment. Sorry. Let's zoom out to a 1030. This is the bull channel that I spoke about before that we've been. And this is this is where a huge rally began um, a couple weeks ago, whatever, whenever this was. Uh, the end of the end of February. I mean the end of February. Sorry, man. I'm so out of it. The end of January. And we reached the top and had a bit of a sell-off. We've been sort of chopping sideways ever since after that massive rally. This is sort of the beginning of what? Sort of the beginning of April. We had a rejection here and a rejection here. 
there was an earlier rejection if I go back even further let's do a 930 so you can see how often we've we've touched this this channel one two three four five six seven eight times on the top one two three four five six times on the bottom this was seven I know on this time scale it looks like we've fallen below but remember this is trash of swim so I have to adjust now if I go to a 15 15 we're right at that level look at that recovery I'm gonna do something nope I can't I can't do it <laughs> it was gonna I was gonna do a swing I was gonna do a swing let's let's see if you know what I sh I tried putting this channel on spy but it just doesn't show the same way so we're, we're well above it here on spy as you can see And I've tried adjusting it, but I don't see the point. Look, we're there. Unless I go center. Let me try a center channel. Hmm. Let's adjust this one. This could be the bounce point. This could well be a bounce point, but I don't know. Demand has been formed. If we do a swing at 413, well, can't even afford it. I have, I have a whopping 11 bucks to trade for the rest of the day. Can't do 413. And that's as high as I really would want to go, to be honest. Well, let's see if this, I doubt, we have 30 minutes left. I doubt there's time for this demand to be retested. I'm going to remove this one. And this one. And this. Rejected. You're too poor. Yeah, I'll have to go back down here for me to get a retest, and that's not going to happen for me. So, whatever. But in in case, in case, well, I had set an alert in case this got it below eleven dollars for a retest of the supply that had been created. Um. I don't know. With 10 minutes left, is this going to turn around? Well, instead of an alert, I should have probably put a buy-in. But I don't know. This may fall even further. In fact, if this does fall and break through that channel I've shown in my, my previous section, um, this is going to sell off by quite a bit, which is going to be counter to seasonality i think then again i don't know i don't know if this is typically is a dip in the middle of april or not but i don't know let's see what happens we'll put a buy in at ten dollars let's see if it dips low enough for me to be filled and let's see if we get a swing overnight i doubt it i'm probably just throwing away these 10 bucks at this point And it does seem a bit asinine to um, to try and go long at this point. But for a cost of pizza, we'll see if the swing works. Of course, I still have to get filled, and it, that probably isn't going to happen. So... Anyways, I'll let you know if it gets filled or not. All right, closing bell, and I am negative. <laughs> I was hoping bulls can recover over 4122, but um, 
we did for a moment and I, I thought, okay, this, this is looking good, but then failed. Um, so yeah, if we fall below that channel I pointed out before on ES, yeah, we're already below it on a 15, a 115, 515, I, who knows, who knows where we are with think with, um, you know what, let me, let me look up trading view. I think I put that channel in trading view. God, I despise thinkorswim, man. Absolute trash. Let's zoom out to a four hour and zoom in. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it looks like we're precariously low here. If, if we, if we, this fails, this fails, this is really going to drop. We still are technically within this, this zone that we've been bouncing in since the beginning of April. So there's that. We still could bounce here, but anyways, I've, I've already committed, you know, $10 in. So, um, I don't know, man, unless PPI is super phantasmical, but that I still have to contend with theta. But anyways, and you know what? I just noticed something. Um, on a grand scale, look at this. This this kind of tells you, hey man, you, you might want to take this short. But anyways, it, looking at the left of the chart, you can always find some rationale for the patterns. But yeah, supply formed, major supply, retest, retest, drop. Yeah, I don't know. I guess if anything, one can look at how I trade and see how you don't trade. And that's the one lesson I'm imparting. All I can do is just hope that overnight this there's a bounce, maybe enough of a bounce to recover the 30 bucks I lost today. Anyways.